is soul? What is soul? It's connection. Soul is a, it's one of the things that uh, uh, you can't claim. You can't give it away. You can share it. I don't know what you got, but it's getting to me. Makes my cold nights hot. Hot winds blow right through me. And I've always been that way. As long as I can remember, I've loved sharing what I, what I have to share, you know. Somehow, Ural Thomas has led a life of soulful transcendence. Throughout joys and pains that are octaves apart, Ural has constantly taken the high note. I've never felt like I had uh, uh, anything to uh, call my own because I always felt like I was a public servant. I even had uh, busboy jobs, and I sang, I was able to sing in busboy. Did you say I've got a lot to learn? Well, don't think I'm trying not to learn Since this is the perfect spot to learn Teach me tonight You know, those kind of songs, you know. So you do that as a busboy? Yeah. Like, what would you be doing when you're singing like I'm carrying about 15 glasses of water on one arm and serving the people like this and dancing around, dancing around with a... Uh, uh, food and stuff too, they come off with these big long carts of food and we have maybe 500 people to serve. Push them up, push them back, baby, get on the right track now, up, la 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 la, push them back, back yeah, la 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 la, push them back. I started singing with the Monterey's, the Cotton Club on, uh, I think it was about 1955, somewhere around in there. And we used to open up for people like Etta James, Big Mama Thornton. Ural's story plays like a Broadway musical. From the streets of Portland, he says he opened for Otis Redding at New York's Apollo Theater. Through the week, there was five shows a day. And, we, and I had to walk from the 10th floor down, and about, in between my going up to the floor, I was making my outfits and costumes for the next set, Jackson. <laughs> it was so much fun. <laughs> On the, my Can You Dig It Live album, mm -hmm. those pictures, the pictures that are on the front and the back was taken by James Brown. Taken by yeah, actually James Brown? Took a, yeah, he took pictures of me and they dropped me a roll of the, a couple of his photographers. He had three or four guys in the audience taking pictures. You know, I guess, not just me, if whoever came through that he thought was had something to offer his, you know. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. he... So what did he say to you about your singing? He never, he would never even see, he always said Macy or those guys. You know, they always come to a party. They gave parties for us, you know. Yeah. But he wouldn't come either. He was the king. Him and Otis Redding, they were fighting over who the king was. And I didn't want no parts of it because I love both of them, you know. Right. I didn't want to be in the middle of that. I thought that, we, God, I said, man, this is going to be magnificent. I'm getting to meet my, two of my favorite people, you know. Yeah. And maybe, maybe we'll get, all get to sing together. That wasn't meant to be, but Ural did record for Uni Records, the same label that offered Neil Diamond, The Osmonds, and Hugh Masekela. There, he did a signature song. Pain is the name of your game. The song was about love, but the game that hurt Ural most of all was the business of music. His writing partner at King Records, home to James Brown, gave Ural some advice. Don't lose your creativity. He says, don't ever lose that. He says, he says let somebody else uh, do, handle that uh, business part of it for you. He said, because you get too involved in it. He says, he says and I'll tell you, you're, you're not the kind of person that could carry anger. I'll never be the same. You had opened for Otis Redding. Yes. You had opened for Stevie Wonder. Yes. You had the, the Apollo. Yeah. You, you had recorded on your own. Right. And you walked away. Yeah, because I didn't, uh, what, what I was being offered was not what I could get. Pain is the name of your game. 
I learned a lot about uh, the industry, and I learned that uh, it, was, it really wasn't my cup of tea. It's not the way I wanna feel. They wanted me to be a dog, eat dog kind of a person, and I couldn't. No, that's not music to me. I, I always felt like music is supposed to help to heal, and I never tried to argue with that's my song or who wrote this song or that song. And after I walked away from actually the songs that we're doing today, I didn't really want to do them all over again. I wanted to move forward. I can't stand it any longer. Ural went home. He funneled all that creativity into building a house. Actually, in 1980, the Sunday Oregonian called him an urban squatter and second cousin to the pioneers. My whole house is made out of recycle. And so once... Uh, All these materials? Every bit of this stuff is... Some of it I pulled out of the dumps. Some of it the re rebuilding center gave me. And sometimes people drop by and say, Hey, Ural, can you uh, use this? And I say, Well, sure, thank you very much. And they says, Well, uh, I have some more. I said, Well, how much do you want for it? They says, No, we're here to help. He fought the city, survived a fire, lost one house, and built two more. He taught music and had jam sessions or salons here every Sunday. And then I just showed up and the, the cast characters were playing music in there just like every Sunday, you know. One guy had, I think, one string on a guitar. One guy was playing tin whistles. It's, it's pretty wild what goes on in there. Scott McGee is a DJ. You can hear him Friday nights from 6 to 8 on KMHD. Also a drummer, Scott wanted to start a band when Mississippi Records' Eric Isaacson told him about Ural Thomas. Well, coming from the fact that I'd already heard all of his recordings, I just thought, I can't wait to meet this person. And the guy that was playing drums immediately stood up and he's like, here you go, get on the drums. And, uh, and like, I think I basically shook Ural's hand, said, so nice to meet you, and was playing drums with him within like 30 seconds. <laughs> Scott built a band of Portland all-stars around that voice, while Ural, at 73 years old, is still renovating his house and now his career with his new soulmates. So then what you and Scott had was a connection. What you and Scott had was soul. It was soul, absolutely. I mean, I didn't have a clue that it would escalate to, to where it is and we become in demand to people because they like what we were doing. Lament Week named Ural Thomas and the Pain Portland's best new band. Ah. I never expected that, and I don't think Scott did either, but at the same time, we didn't push it that, we didn't say, get that away, like, bring it on in here, man. It's a most soul. We hook it up. with what I've accomplished and what I've lost and what I've gained, which is, uh, it balances out, you know? I, have, I don't feel like I have any uh, reason to be disappointed. I don't feel like I have any reason to feel like that I'm uh, something special. Well, you know what else is balanced? What is that? You spent all these years building up houses. Yes. And now you're spending almost every night tearing them down. <laughs> <laughs> that was wonderful.